all of that school and how you got into music wow it's a long story <laughs> no right <laughs> we, we can summarize <laughs> okay so, so i grew up in ghana i was born in ghana yes um, i'm pretty young i'm 30 years old um i went to red church uh junior secondary and then to pope john's after then i went to university of cape coast to study economics i see i did uh two years left went to university of ghana Legon to study music and uh, theater arts why the switch um the whole economics thing wasn't my idea. It was my my parents' idea. <laughs> idea. So yeah. you went to, you went to do what you wanted to yeah, do. Yeah, I, nice. I left to go do what I wanted to do. Right. Um, then I did a uh, music and theater arts at Legon, and then right after I, I finished university, um, well before that I was in a group with Quickly T. Right. Um, we called ourselves D Black and Quickly T, and then we worked on a worked on a mixtape album project. Not a lot of people were making music in the English language, mm-hmm. so it was sort of a test. So we called it target practice. <laughs> target practice. Yeah. So we had we had um, we had the opportunity to shoot two videos off of that that project. Um, both videos were done for free for us. Um, first by Daniel Kwashiga, um, who's with DH1. He was a charter house then, mm-hmm. and then he didn't charge us any money to shoot that video. But fortunately for us, we got nominated for the Channel O Awards off that video. Off that it video. was called Move. Nice. And and I was like, oh wow, this music thing might pay off. Huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we went to South Africa. We didn't win. I think Nato C or Debaj from Nigeria won. That was for Best West African Video. That year, yeah. Then the year after, our second video, which was shot by Geo Famous Films, mm-hmm. we shot it for free as well. I think these people believed in the in the hip hop music, that, yeah, and the hip hop music in the English language that we're making, mm-hmm. and realized that it could break barriers, it could break boundaries. So we shot that video for free as well. Then that free video won video of the year at the Ghana Music Awards okay, yes. and then got three nominations this time at the channel Awards. So we didn't win but then from there we started getting but it still encouraged you to do yeah. better yeah so what what it actually did for us was it gave us a bigger platform then we started getting booked for gigs mm-hmm. actual paying gigs because all this time even after the first video and the nomination we're still doing shows for free now we started getting paid and I started actually making money off um, the music that we're, we're, we've been making for so long. Mm-hmm. Then um, Kweku decided we should work on solo albums. So he worked on his solo album, I worked on my solo album. And um, I put out the first song, which was Somebody, with Kwabna mm-hmm. in 2010. So about seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Yes, in 2010. Then I put a second one out with D Crime, called Get On The Dance Floor. I went on a nationwide tour, I released the album. Um, then I got nominated for every single award show that was happening at that time, from 2011, from the BETs, the Channel O's, GMAs, everything. So I was like, this might actually pay off. So I started taking the music seriously, mm-hmm. released a second album two years after, yes. that had Vera. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that had Vera, it had Change Your Life, and I started performing all over the world. I was traveling, I was living my dream, you know, I was really, really excited. And then um, two years after, I decided to work on another album. 2015, I released Personal Person with Castro. Which we started with. Then um, Castro then released Set Hope Featuring Me. Mm-hmm. Then Castro disappeared. Yeah. And I didn't really want to put out any more stuff and perform the songs. Did that have an effect on you? I actually stopped making music for about a year. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think it was was incomplete for me to do shows without him without him because we never got to perform the song i think the song was about a month old when he both decided. songs like i think we released them like just two weeks apart from so each you other. never really got the chance to perform it on stage never before he, wow so everything was just in the studio and that was it yeah like we, yeah we, that definitely might have hit you hard yeah we did about three four songs together mm-hmm. and then he recorded like a whole album at my place and then he disappeared and i i just didn't feel Right. comfortable performing the songs by myself i can't sing <laughs> and, and he, he's doing the singing and i don't have a strong grasp of the tree language even even to try make it happen it wasn't working for me. i don't think i performed that song more than five or six times ever since we put it out no? so then uh, i took a break from music i started focusing on other things i started an events company we started doing celebrity soccer we did um, the Bukum Banco Aita Palace fight. Mm-hmm. Um, we opened a nightclub last year. We're working on building a lounge. But now, uh, my team and I have decided I'm back to the music now. We've signed some new artists. We have a new studio. 
I'm about to release new 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 music, so that's where it's been. For yeah, first. I mean it's 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 a brilliant summary, and I definitely want to I definitely want to pick parts of it because there's several parts of that whole story that attract a lot of questions. So I first mm-hmm. want to ask you, did you really want to do music from the get go when you were growing up? Did you really want to do music? No, I, I didn't. In the beginning, I just wanted to be a part of the entertainment industry, whether it was being an artist manager or an event coordinator. I just wanted to be a part of the entertainment industry. I Why? wanted to understand. Why was that? I had a love for music. Mm-hmm. I didn't think I was an artist. Yes. Um, I just loved the music. Um, I started listening to hip-hop music very, very late in my life. I probably was about 16 or 17. Um, I didn't grow up in a house that enjoyed a lot of music. You know, my parents were very conservative, especially my mom. I started listening to hip-hop when some of my half-brothers, who lived outside the country, came back home. And I was hanging with them, and they started playing Jay-Z and Biggie and Busta Rhymes and Lauryn Hill for me back then. Right. Then I fell in love with, with hip-hop music mm-hmm. and then R&B music. So I just wanted to be a part of the entertainment industry right. and understand it. And I had a love for film as well. Right. So I script most of my music videos. Nice. Almost every music video I've shot, I've scripted. Except me, I've shot probably about 20 videos in my career, and I've scripted about 15 of them. Um, I had a love for it. But... Um, it was really Kwekuti. The project with Kwekuti is what made me try and be an artist myself. Yeah, but that wasn't definitely what you wanted to be. You no. just wanted to manage the business. Yes. Yeah, so it, it was a, it was a, it was me saying I could do both. <laughs> but your parents took you to school to study economics. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> it didn't work out. <laughs> and it didn't work out. <laughs> didn't you think that the economics was, was going to help you manage the music? No, it, 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 it has it, helped It me. has. Yeah. But at that time, you just switched and went to yeah, do music. I, I went with what I, what I loved. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I loved the music and I loved the, the, the and, film. And what was their reaction when you decided to change camp? Oh, like, I've gone from being kicked out the house. Oh, God. <laughs> to sleeping in people's couches. Um, prodigal from VIP. I used, to, I used to live in his house. <laughs> Um, wow, it's it's been a. <laughs> Your parents didn't like the idea because you yeah. see they are definitely very conservative. Yeah, when I when I switched to Lego and I was left to um, to to basically take care of myself for a while. So I was living with friends, including DJ Mensa, Prodigal from VIP. But I managed to scrape through and finish. You know, wow. my mom finally took you back. Understood what was going on, and she was excited and happy for me. And and, and what what about your dad? Uh, my dad passed away. Yeah, but what was his reaction at that time when you were switching between school and... At that time, to be honest, my dad wasn't really paying attention to what I was doing at that time. Oh. Yeah, he wasn't really paying attention, realizing that I was switching from this to that. It wasn't my mom. My mom is like an educationist. She also went to the University of Cape Coast, so she actually wanted me to finish there. Right. But that was not to happen. No. You know, nah, not at all. And... Um, she got really upset in the beginning, yeah. but finally, I think in my final year, she was good with it, and, and, and since then, everything's been smooth. Wow. And, um, well, we've, we've probably fast-forwarded a whole lot yeah. to, you know, where we are now, but <laughs> it's great because if we have to go into the intricacies, we probably will stay here yeah, all day. Yeah, it's yeah but you, you, you're talking about how you met Kwekuti and then you got into music. Now, mm-hmm. basically, your stint and your experiences at um, Legon with the music you know, um, department would definitely might have helped you. But when you finished from Legon, what, what, what happened? Um, you know, when, at what point in time did you decide that, okay, I'm going to go in this with Kwekuti and see what we can do with it? It was even actually before the end of, 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 of Legon. It was... Um, Probably a year before, mm-hmm. I was I was going from JSO Studio in Adenta to my hostel in Lingon to another studio in Adabraka, owned by this guy called Janard. He ended up producing my first song, so it wasn't even after school; it was before school. Be able to focus fully on on the music on the music. So I think me and Kweku were like a year before I finished school when he came out of Big Brother. Even before he went to Big Brother, we both auditioned together, mm-hmm. and then he went and represented Ghana. And when he came back, we started working on the project like pretty hard. Yeah. Um, we recorded about four songs with Jay So, and then Kweku brought like um, two or three of his own songs. Then I brought like two or three of my own songs, and then we did stuff with other producers, and then put them together. I had like 12 songs on the album. Right. And then as soon as I finished, well, I was like, yo, let's go hard on this, and let's let's focus, and let's make this happen. And then, and then it happened. Yeah, and yeah. and 
you so when when you finished school you didn't think about you know working for anybody never you just, ever you did <laughs> never, never 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 ever, ever. the music was too it was it was a part of my life you know it's it's when you love something mm-hmm. when you love doing something it doesn't feel like a job anymore no. you know yeah. you wake it up yeah you wake up every morning and you're like okay so what are we going to do to push yeah. this what are we going to what are we recording tomorrow what, what producer should we work with you know if it's when it's something you love it doesn't feel like work right. i wasn't thinking about going to work for anybody because i found something that, that i love like, doing right were you writing your own music then every time every time until today i never i've never ever recorded a song somebody's written for me before. no and would you you know think about doing that in the near future i don't think it can work for me it won't no because you probably might not feel what you're you saying yeah or everybody i know a lot of people who who who, who are vocalists and, and, and no not even rappers vocalists who who don't even write it works for them it, it, it won't work for me yeah there, there are some people who just you know yeah. can do one or the other no, you know, it, some it people can't. can mix the both uh, which is which is fine and we yeah. 100 percent agree with that and um what 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 was it like for you and crazy t when you know the first video that was shot for you was a hit and everybody liked it and now you know people were drawing you for shows and all of that how did that make you feel I was excited because I, I hadn't seen um, music made in the, in, like, hip-hop music made in the English language. At that time, the radio was dominated by Tree and Gun yeah. all the time. Even Pigeon was just, like, two or three people, which was uh, T. Blaze and, mm-hmm. and them. But everything was Tree and Gun on the radio. Right. Or Bravo and Reggie Rockstone and Tiny. That, that was all that was on the radio. So I was excited when I started hearing that music on, like, not... Excuse me to say, like, like back then, Vibe FM was the was the only station that was supporting the kind of music we're playing. But when you heard your music in English on Joy FM, you were like, "Oh my God!" You know, I'm on commercial radio. <laughs> you know, so. I but was, that made you feel good. Yeah, like I felt really, really good, and we're doing like Buster Rhymes came to Ghana. We got booked for the show. Nice. Like, we're doing shows all the time. Yeah. And it, at that time, were you thinking about the money? Or the fame? No, not 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 at all. I was just happy to do what, what I was doing, doing as right. long as I could move from point A to point B, mm-hmm. and I could survive. I was fine. But then when it got to when when we both went solo, then I started taking the business more oh, seriously. seriously. I started trying to shoot videos outside of Ghana right. with with other directors and, and and make music with artists from different co- countries and mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Then I started taking it a bit more seriously when it was my solo project. Right. But when you were doing with people TNM, it was just for the fun of it. The love of and it. And the love of it, more yeah. like it, for mm-hmm. the love of it. Okay, we'll listen to Vera real quick and come back with entertainment today. Uh, this song's beat Eve, tambourine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, it sounds like an Eve track. Yeah. 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 I heard him rap over, 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 over that, and I thought he was an amazing rapper. Okay, was, uh, so you had to create something on those lines, so yeah. to speak. Nice. So I, you all got in the studio. I remember he had a studio in Oslo at the time, so we went there and did the song, and then... I decided, at that time I recorded about 33 songs for my album. So then I had to pick the first three. Mm-hmm. The first one was somebody featuring Krabna Krabna, and then this was the second one. Right. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm sure um, for for you to have, you know, pulled D-Crime along on this track before he did his big track, mm-hmm. I'm sure it definitely had an influence on him. Can you tell whether, you know, he really appreciated oh, it? Oh, yes, kind of yes. D-Crime, career? D-Crime is still my brother to today. I remember when we had that song out, anytime I had a show, anywhere I went, he was always with me. This was always the last song we would perform. And even when he had that track, Kill Me Shy, mm-hmm. it, it became bigger than this song. Yes. I made him perform that song last. Right. It wasn't about ego. No, no it's my show, so I got to go. Nah. I made him come and do his thing. And then people, the girls, especially the girls, the yeah, girls yeah. would go crazy. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I went on tour, there were certain cities he couldn't go to with me because he had other bookings. Mm-hmm. And the girls were always asking, where's the crime? There was the girls who were sitting in the reception area of the hotels we were staying in waiting for the crime to come. <laughs> You know, D. Crime is still my brother. Yeah. Much salute, much respect to him, you know. Yeah, D. Crime, you got big fans here. Mad love for you. So, I mean, the other artists you also recorded with, I mean, if you, I mean, when you listen to this particular track, you would mm-hmm. think that, okay, you recorded with D. Crime. He, you and him are pretty much on the same level because you, you gel, you mm-hmm. know, there's, there's an easy flow. And you probably all would be doing the, the, the music in English. But if you went out of a way to record to the likes of maybe Castro or Kobna Kobna, you'd have mm-hmm. said, well, they play high life music. I love so, high life music. You know, where, where, where did you find common ground? Okay, so first thing is I love high life music. 
more than any other genre of music that comes from Ghana. I love how I like music. And then the second thing is, because I make music in the English language predominantly, mm -hmm. I like to make music with people who are more grassroots, like people who can sing in tree mm -hmm. or ga, mm -hmm. the people who can appeal to the masses more than I can do off the rap that I'm making. Right. And and because I love highlight music, I tend to sway towards that towards side. Highlight. Yeah. So from Kwabna Kwabna to Bisa to Castro, mm -hmm. those are the people I've recorded with the most. I think I've done two with Bisa, two with Castro, two with Kwabna Kwabna. Right. And then before Yan Ponta. Yeah, I think you're also looking on, on the businessman point of view yeah. that, you know, I got to be able to kill two birds with a stone. Yeah. So that's probably why you would have mm -hmm. done that. Well, good plan. Let's talk, let, I mean, we're still on the same tangent. Let's talk about you being a music business entrepreneur. I mean, a lot of us will sit back and say, well, here in Ghana, all you hear is, okay, he's my producer, he's my manager. But there are very few people who do the kind of work that you do. Mm -hmm. And um, you went on also to, you know, do establish your company, and then you broke it down to doing clothing, films, television, yeah. and all of that. Um, why that switch? Um, I wouldn't say it's a switch. I would say... It's a, it's a continuation or a combination? Yeah, it's a combination of things that I love to do. I love mm -hmm. the entertainment industry. So I went from getting the idea of a clothing brand to support every album that I put out. So every time I put an album out, I have like designers come up with like different designs mm -hmm. for a clothing mm -hmm. line. I did it for my, my last album. Um, I'll do it for this album as well. It was pretty successful and it was, it was successful because I didn't have a lot of overheads. I didn't have to pay for a shop. I didn't have to pay electricity and utilities and rent and all that kind of stuff. I just had the clothing distributed to a lot of different stores. Mm -hmm. So everybody makes money. A store owner, a person who's distributing. You do. I do, and everybody's happy. You know, and, and we sell it at the, the prices that the, the masses and the people who love the music can afford. Right. That's the key to it. When you, when you, when you overprice, it's like um, it's like walking into a store and seeing a polo shirt mm -hmm. and your brand selling for the same price. Ghanaians will always go for the polo shirt. <laughs> exactly, because that's what they know. Yes, so I always try and price the, the clothing mm -hmm. appropriately. And then I went from there, and then I got into TV. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I did the EFGH show. It was, a, it was an idea my team and I had for ages we we're trying to get it off the ground for so long mm -hmm. and then we tried it and then one we went into movies we produced a movie we won an award at the Ghana Movie Awards oh, tell us more about that one yeah it was called um why should I get married mm -hmm. it yeah, had heard about that. it had a bunch of actors and musicians mm -hmm. I had E.R. Mm -hmm. Reggie Rockstone Ifia mm -hmm. John DeMello Prince David Osei Prince Shingo Marie Nipembe from um, Namibia um Jose Tolbert, a lot, a lot of, um, it was a combination of um, musicians and, and actors. It was very interesting. It was, it was a success. Um, I, would, I would want to work on another movie again pretty soon. Yeah, was um, it something that you wrote? Was that movie something that you wrote yourself? No, I co-directed, I didn't write it. Right. It was written by Prince of Shingo. I, I co-directed it, and then we produced it, and we had a premiere in Kumasi and Cape Coast, and then Accra as well. Mm -hmm. It did really, really well. It, it, I learned a lot about the movie industry. It's not an easy industry. No, to it's be not. So yeah, it's not easy at all. And then we went from that, and then we started an events company. Mm -hmm. We started this thing called Celebrity Soccer. Every year, all the artists come up with their own football teams, mm -hmm. and we play against each other. The first one, Shatawali won. The second one, Shatawali won. <laughs> the third one, Stoneboy won. <laughs> and we're about to do the fourth one yeah. in, in about two months. Yeah. yeah. So uh, then after that, what do we do? Um, um, when it's a sport, yes, we did a book from Vancouver site to Paris, Kumasi Sports Stadium. Mm -hmm. That was like a big deal for me. Big ups to the sponsors, Joy Daddy, uh, Nathaniel Arthur from here. He right. was the he was the ring announcer, yes, shop guy. Uh, it was it was a major, major, major success. And then after that, I went into um, opening the nightclub. Mm -hmm. How's uh, that doing? Amazing. Club Onyx. Yes. Um, it's seven months old now. Seven months old yes, now. Yes. It was, it was, it's been amazing. Uh, this weekend we had Chatawale in there. We yeah. had Fowls. Yeah. It's in the same vicinity as Reggie. Right next door. Right next door. So how yeah. do you guys deal? Because I know you and Reggie are buddies. Yes. You know, coming up, um, I, I did my album launch right there. My mm -hmm. first album was released in that same club. And Reggie bought the one next door. Mm -hmm. 
and he was the he was the host for my album launch. He bought the he bought the club next door, and I bought the one next door to him <laughs> as well. So it's it's we all having having our, seen our dreams come true. Right, right. It's, it's uh. It's, what it's what nice. got what got you into you know running a nightclub? Is this some? Is it because your dad used to you know do stuff like that? My dad never did. You never did. Your dad, your dad never did. I thought your dad did. My dad was uh my dad was the chairman of Olympics football club. Oh right. And yeah, then, uh, I'm just I, I just yeah. mixed up faces for a minute. Sorry about that. He was a businessman. He was uh, he was into agricultural machinery and and equipment. Um, like I said, I love the entertainment industry. And and. I was I was brand ambassador for Ciroc. Yes, I was about to get there too because then I'm like, okay, you're not only bla um, a brand ambassador for them, you're also brand ambassador for Rick Brand. Uh, yeah. Then I owned by Rick Ross. Uh, yeah. So, when 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 I signed on as brand ambassador for Ciroc, I was doing a lot of touring in clubs. Why did they pick you out of all the many people that you find who are doing something similar here in Accra? You should probably Guinness gonna let me tell <laughs> find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. I, I did a lot of touring in nightclubs and I started traveling a lot and I, and I started experiencing nightlife in different places mm -hmm. and I wanted to bring the same vibe that I felt outside of Ghana mm -hmm. combined with what I was seeing happening when I was doing that tour with Ciroc mm -hmm. and I was like you know what I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna set this up it took me over a year to make it happen but then it happened. How long? How long have you been um, a Ciroc brand ambassador? Um, I'm not Ciroc anymore. You're I'm now Ciroc. Bel Air. Oh, now you're Bel Air. So Ciroc was for um, a year and change, mm -hmm. and then um, three weeks ago, I switched to Bel Air. Oh, okay. And how's yeah. that going so far? Amazing. It's like it's the fastest selling brand in the club right now. Wow. Yeah, it's wow. doing really, really, really well. Wow. And um, so at this point in time. The music business entrepreneur has his hands in so many businesses. How do you juggle it? So that's that. That's why something will suffer. Yes. And the and music, the music is the one who's suffering right yeah, now. Yeah, but it's not going to suffer anymore. Well, it's not going to suffer anymore. <laughs> when is that changing? Next yeah. month. Hey. I dropped this on fire bulbs. You. Yeah. Are we working so on it at the moment? It's done. Yeah. It's done. It's done. Yes. I'm just switching uh, management teams now. That's in Abinda that you can't shake it. Yeah. yeah. Another song is called Abinda. Oh, you. Oh, <laughs> I can't think far. <laughs> Uh, I can't think that. <laughs> yeah, so next month there's new music, a lot of new music. Um, a lot of new music. There's something with uh, Sarkozy and YC from Nigeria. There's yeah. something with Files. Mm -hmm. um, there's something with Euphoria and Ponce. Very, every, all the songs are very different from each other. There's mm -hmm. something with Fino from Nigeria. Um, what I decided to do was work on music from different genres. So there's, there's a lot of high life music nice. that I haven't released. There's um. There's hip hop, back to the essence. There's the Afrobeats trend. There's everything. There's a bit of everything. There's How many songs on that album? Yes, we released. Um, I have about twenty six now. Yeah. I'm still recording. Yeah, so, um, but you might, you know. I'll have to pick and choose. Yeah, pick yeah. and choose. Yeah, but there's, there's there's a lot of new music coming out, and I'm trying to put a lot of videos out as well at the same time because the visuals help the music do more. To go, yeah. yeah, do 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 do, do justice, justice to the song. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Right so look that. out next month. Yeah, 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 I'm definitely looking at it. <laughs> I'm definitely looking out. I've been that. Yes, I'm definitely looking out for that one. I'm sure it's going to be a track that will be a club banger. It's supposed to be in any particular order. Okay. Your favorite. Okay, let's not say rappers. Okay. Artists. Musicians. Artists, all right. Okay, so to be honest with you, mm -hmm. my favorite now no. is yes. Shatawali. Shat okay. Um, Stoneboy, definitely. Sakodia is my favorite rapper. Ophorian Ponce is my all-time favorite nice. vocalist and yeah. Castro. Would you like to record anything with Ophorian Ponce in the near future? I already have. You already have? <laughs> oh, okay, you beat me to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say Castro, but because he's... Um, no, let's just keep it at Castro. Okay, we'll keep it at Castro. Yeah. And I won't push it any further. Mm -hmm. So we've got um, Ophorian Ponce, we've got... Castro, Stoneboy, Stone Sakodie, Shatawale. And yeah. what about the ladies? You have any favorites? The ladies. If he has my favorite vocalist. Yes, I like Adina as well. Mm -hmm. And there's a new artist signed to um, my label. Mm -hmm. She's called Sefa. Sefa. 
She'll be my third as well. All right. Okay. When she blows up, she'll become number one. <laughs> well, since you're working with her, I can see her yeah. blowing up to be number one. So um, I'm sure that you also, I mean, it's a good thing that you you probably just didn't think about yourself in this industry and you're trying to help younger people also mm-hmm. go into it. Do you have, apart from Sefa that you just mentioned, do you have any other younger artists whom you're mm-hmm. working with at the moment and you think that, mm-hmm. you know, moving forward they could be yeah, um, real from, breaks? From DJ Breezy being a producer, and a DJ, he produces most of the stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there's Sefa, um, there's, a, there's a young guy called Gage as well. His song dropped in about a month as well. Right. And there's a controversial Waisa. Waisa. <laughs> yeah. Are you thinking about featuring any of them on your album? Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah, they are. They are on the album. They, they are on all of them. Yeah, all of them. All of them, all of them on and, your upcoming and, album. Yeah, and they all have their own records coming out mm-hmm. um, in the next month too. You hear music for every from every single one of them. Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about you and D Money. Mm-hmm. What happens? Um, uh, pretend, pretend that I didn't know anything. I, I, I hear there's you know misunderstanding between yourself and D Money. What really happened? Um, it's when people have different um, visions on 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 on, on the way forward. Mm-hmm. He had a different route he wanted to go. I didn't think it was. I didn't think the same thing, and he just wanted to do his own thing. So I said, "Okay, fine." That, that was it. And this this is in two thousand and eleven. Mm-hmm. Six years. Six ago. years ago. Yeah. He just wanted to do things differently, and I respect that. Everybody has an opinion on how they want their career to. Yeah, the entire stage. So I think I mean we're cool. We I see him and we're fine. It's, it's I was just trying to help, really. Right. Yeah. And if you had the chance to work with him again, would you do it? Um, investing, I don't think so. Uh-huh. Because for me, I don't, I, I, I don't look for um, just talent. I look for people who believe in my vision as well. Mm-hmm. So I don't think we can work together in that way. But if it's making music, I think he's, he's, uh, he's, he's talented enough for me to work with him. Yes, for sure, for sure. Okay, okay. at least there's hope, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's hope. <laughs> and um, where is my boy, Kwekuti? I haven't seen him in a while. Kwekuti just got to Ghana two days ago. Really? Where yeah. has he been hiding? He's been in South Africa for five years. Really? What's he doing out there? He's doing exactly what you're doing here. Oh, he's working kidding. on radio. You're yeah. kidding. He's working on Planet Radio in South Africa, Johannesburg, and he, he just got back to Ghana two days ago. I see. Yeah. Well, I'd definitely like to get in touch with him if he's staying for a while, so we can also chat with him. He's moved radio. back, so. He's moved back. Yeah, oh, he's, okay. He's, He's going to be making music. He's, going to, he's about to focus back on the music now. So you will definitely be seeing Kukuti. Oh, then I definitely have to, you know, um, get yeah. information on Kukuti from mm-hmm. you. I haven't I w- seen I w- him I w- in a while. I'll give you his... Um, definitely. I would definitely yeah. like to, you know, connect back with him. Let's talk also about the music industry in Ghana at the moment. What really annoys you in the music industry in Ghana right now? <laughs> <laughs> you want me to start? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can start. Last week, Stoneboy came and told me his opinion. And then I've been said his opinion. KK Fusu was here and he also, you know, voiced his version of it so it's okay i mean you can also bring yours to the table it all helps to make it better i feel like the the body that's responsible for the welfare of musicians are not doing their job properly i feel like they're not doing their work properly Mm -hmm. i feel like i feel like they've made effort but i don't think it's enough at all very very little attention has been paid to the welfare of musicians all over the world, there are royalty collection societies. In the UK, there's PRS. In the US, there's BMI, there's ASCAP. There's a lot of different companies that are involved in the process of collecting royalties for musicians. Mm-hmm. Now, they say the royalty collection society here is Gamera. I don't understand how Gamera works. Do they my, ever pay you royalties? I'm in my seventh year of making music. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two years ago, mm-hmm. I spoke about this on another station, and two weeks later, myself and DJ Breezy got mobile money alert of six hundred cents <laughs> from Gamma. It's a mere pittance, huh? And then I got told that oh, all the big boys. All the A-listers is 600 CDs each. And it didn't make any sense to me. No, it wouldn't. Because you can't tell me myself and RTBs got the same airplay in the past year. It's not possible. Mm. You can't tell me Shatawali and Stoneboy got the same. 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 How? No. 
And I know radio stations pay their due to Gabriel. I know TV stations too. Why isn't this running properly? Right. Why isn't this monitored? Why aren't you showing us play Joy FM played Stone Boy's da 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 song 800 times between June and 1st August. June and that. This is how much he is due. Why is that not happening? Yeah. It's been years. I asked the board this when he first came into office. He said it's being worked on. And you still haven't received I think we're in our sixth or seventh year now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's not working. Yeah. Why is it working in Nigeria? Why is Samra working in South Africa? Why do I get royalties from South Africa? All my music plays on their TV network and I don't get royalties from, from my, my country. country. Why are they able to do it? Why are you not able to do it? I know the government gave grants a while ago, mm-hmm. two million Ghana cities. Mm-hmm. What did that go to? You guys did a Ghana Music Festival mm-hmm. concert. Mm-hmm. For what? Yeah. How did it benefit the musician? Ghana Music Week. Yeah, how did it benefit the musician? It didn't benefit the musician. Why didn't you invest that in setting up the software and hardware that's needed to collect this data so that musicians are paid properly? The musicians who are aged, the musicians who are dying poor, the musicians who are sick and can't even pay the hospital bills. Mm-hmm. The musicians is not just rappers, it's not just singers, it's producers, it's songwriters, yeah. it's instrumentalists. In yeah. yeah. People play the keyboard and trumpets. Mm-hmm. There's mm-hmm. so many people involved. Our music industry isn't running properly. Mm-hmm. If you had the chance to head it, would you? Um, paid it from out to beast. Said I should. Um, Sock as well, and and shout out to. But when you're gonna do something like this, you have to be very very selfless, and you have to have the time to manage and run it properly. I can help. At this point, I can help, but I think that it's not just about me. It's about the whole music fraternity coming together and just putting things in place. When you know that this person here can handle this aspect of making the machine work, it's like a machine. A machine has different parts. You see there's a bolt here, Mm -hmm. there's a nut here. Mm -hmm. It's just putting things in place to make sure that this This mic is working properly. That's all there is to it. Mm-hmm. I don't think Two Face is the head of the music industry in Nigeria. No. He's not head of music, art, the version of music there. No. I don't think Double HP is the head of the South African. But things are in place. It's working. People get paid to do this. Mm. We need to get the right people in the right positions to make the machine work mm. so that everybody is good. It's not happening. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. And it's unfortunate because because of the state of our music industry, to be honest with you, everybody's thinking about themselves. Shatawali can rant and rant, but it doesn't fix the problem. Mm-hmm. There's a next man who's there. He's not saying anything because he's trying to get a hit song so he can feed his family. Yeah, so they won't think about the association. Yeah. And, you know, but... but but you know, uh, how do you think we can make all of this work? Like I said, we need the right people in the right place, and it's not just me saying it on on the radio. Mm-hmm. It's about action being taken. I don't care if it's still a boy who's president of the music union, as long as the right thing is being done, done. and the machine is working. It's fine. It's not about the post and the position for me. Yeah. It's about making sure that it's working. Yeah. Everybody is getting what they're doing. The pros- the, the, uh, all the elements in yeah. the system are working. And, and why everybody is getting their due. Yeah, and why isn't it working? Because a lot of things in the whole system is not working. I, I, it's been years. It's not like... It's not like I no, it, I, I think months. it just yeah, it, it it probably just didn't start not working when a boy came to post. Yeah, so why hasn't it been fixed? That's what I want exactly to Exactly the answers I've been trying you to... You can't tell me there's no money. Because <laughs> I know some monies have come in from the government. So where does all of that money go to? Yeah, and when, there's nothing you can tell me that you spend that money on that's more important than this. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me a concert at a stadium mm-hmm. for fans to come and jam to for free is more important than making sure that the welfare of the musicians... That, sta- that stadium concert had, had its own ups and downs. And it's not just one. There's, a, there's it been a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, this the fairly recent one. Yeah. But before that, there were several ones. Yep, and it doesn't make any sense to it me. Doesn't. I need to understand what's going on. It doesn't. Like, 
if I, if I go into this, I'll, I'll talk too much. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll probably just let the music industry and their situation hang for a minute. And let's focus on you and what you want to do with your music. Um, we're talking about, you know, what annoys you about the music industry. And you were talking about, you know, things not working out the way they're supposed to be working. Let's talk about you. What's your proudest achievement so far? Music wise, mm -hmm. just being able to, 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 for me, it's being able to attract the fan base just based off the music that they hear. Like, like I did a show in London at the O2, mm -hmm. and it was full. I was the headliner. This is about three years ago. And like, that's, for me, it's not even about the money. It's about seeing people that, that came because they heard my music. Exactly. They've never seen me before. Exactly. But they heard the music and they appreciate it and they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Because it's work and it's the love that I have for what I do. That made me go into the studio to create this. Yeah, and, and the people, people are sharing it with you. Yeah, yeah. that's for me, that's, that's it for me. Yeah, and is, is there, is, has there been a point so far that you think you have failed at something that you really kicked yourself for? Um. Okay, so for me, it's... I'm a workaholic. Mm -hmm. I like to juggle things. Right. I see that because yeah. then you have your hands in almost any and everything. <laughs> yeah, so a year ago, mm -hmm. I realized that I was doing too much and it was affecting the music. And I wasn't getting what I was looking for. Right. For me, I was like, ah, just take a break. For me, that's what I felt like I failed at about a year and a half ago. Yeah. You, you felt like you had your hands in too many things and your music career was suffering. Yeah, yeah. 2015, November. That's when I realized that. Yeah. I needed to focus on certain things mm -hmm. and prioritize and then take a break from mm -hmm. the music and do other things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I guess maybe you were just priorities, but not definitely a failure, so to speak. So don't even let that. But know, that's, that's the closest you. thing. That's the, the closest, closest thing, thing to yeah. failure that you have come yeah. to. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, it's understandable. And do you have any hidden talents that we don't know about? Because, I mean, you probably, like they say, you do all. You've done the music, the movies. I play. Really? I can play soccer. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On number you I, I used to play football like every every Friday. Yeah. But then I, I stopped. I remember when, when when Chris Brown came to Ghana, the concert was on Sith March. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Wednesday. It was a holiday. Mm -hmm. And I went to play football on Friday. I was billed for that show. I think that was last like my highest paying that was like my highest paying show at the time. Yeah. The, the, the highest I've been paid for a show. And I went and twisted my leg on Friday. Sure. Yeah. So you went on the stage with a bandaged leg? Yeah, <laughs> oh I did. Gosh. Nobody could tell. I was in pain. pain. I can imagine. So <laughs> and then say, I was like, you know. Let me just finish this show and I'll deal with the pain after that. Yeah, so I, I stopped playing soccer like as regularly as I I used to. But yeah. like that's something that I from when I was back in school, I used to play football a lot. That's, that's probably basically maybe the only yeah. hidden talent that, that I have. Yeah. Really? I'm sure that you probably haven't this you probably haven't uncovered a lot of them, but they're still maybe in we'll you. See. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Look at that. He talked about it so coolly and nonchalantly, <laughs> like you know, he doesn't know he's got it. But life's like that. It's all good. D Black is in our live studio session this morning. You can reach out if you have Um I like to write about stuff that I've experienced before. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. From this song to Vera to Every, uh, most of my music is based off things that I've experienced, not personally, but maybe, maybe, maybe personally, but things that I've seen happen to other people as well. Right. What did Vera do to you? Oh, it was an SSS. <laughs> it was a secondary school situation that I exaggerated on a song. That's, that's all it was. <laughs> I thought that maybe, you know, you were trying to say about some chick called Vera that you probably, you know. No, it's, it was, it's actually a true story. Oh, really? The writing Vera was, was, the person that made me write that song was Reggie Rockstar. I see. Um, we traveled to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I had only songs in the English language. So he kept saying, um, why don't you do a song in Tree? Like how I switched from what I was doing when I was in the UK and in the US and then came to Ghana and I started rapping in Tree. And I said, y you have a strong grasp of the Tree language. Mm -hmm, but I, I don't. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, started, I started learning how to speak Tree when I went to Pope, Pope John's secondary school. So I don't have that firm grasp. Right. What I have a firm grasp over is English. Mm -hmm. So I can't. So he said, why don't you let D. Kern write for you? And I was like, <laughs> like you're asking me. Yeah. Somebody can Writing write for, for me. Writing for me is a problem. Yeah. It doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. So he said, what about Pigeon? Yeah. 
that so, you can so, so do. Right, but we speak pigeon all the yeah. time, so I can do it. Yeah. And he was shooting a commercial for Glow, so <laughs> he said, "Okay, I'm gonna go shoot this commercial. By the time I'm back, let me hear a song in pigeon." <laughs> then I wrote Vera. Oh, okay. So when he came back, I was like, "Listen, this is what I worked yeah. on." As soon as we came back to Ghana, I went into the studio, studio. and I recorded it, yeah. and then Joey B was my next door neighbor. Small world. Yeah. So he was listening to me record it right next door. I had done two verses, and he said, "Oh, can I be on a song?" And I said, okay, I'm, to, I'm about to go to bed. I'm going home, work on a song, write a verse. When I come back tomorrow, if I like it, I'll keep it on. And then he did the verse, and I came back, and I liked it, so I kept it so on. So you kept your word, too. Yeah, That's yeah. the way to go. Yeah. So tell me, what's your best encounter with your fam? You probably met somebody out there, and you know the person said something that you really, really liked. Not best encounter, but this it was surprising. It's hap I've seen it happen like three times. Mm -hmm. I've seen people with D-Black tattoos on their arms. Oh, cool. I mean, Adabra asked me this not too long ago, and I still have the pictures on my phone. Wow. Like, I saw a girl with a D-Black tattoo all the way here. And I saw another guy. I was at the, um, was at the Independence Square. Mm -hmm. He had D-Black tattoos here. And I was like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, you, know? you, you, you guys yeah. are mad lovers out yeah, there. Uh, but you have a lot of tattoos yourself. Yes, Yeah. I do. Why is that? Um, I, 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 you I, just I love, love tattoos. tattoos yeah. Is yeah. it painful to get those things on? It's irritating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that you didn't yeah. say it there, really. It's irritating. It's irritating. Yeah, but yeah. even though it's irritating, you like to get them on. Yeah, yeah you like them. Suffer to gain. Suffer to gain. <laughs> <laughs> and what's, what's been your worst encounter with a fan? Worst? Um, I'm too positive to recognize let, the negative. Yeah, I, it doesn't it doesn't get to me like um, like sometimes on social media you hear people say, "Oh, you're not a good rapper," but for me, it's not about just being a good rapper. It's about putting out music that the people love, yeah. you know. And and everybody gets criticized. Yeah. Every single person, from Michael Jackson to Jay Z to Madonna to Beyonce. They all get their bit. Everybody, everybody gets it. Yeah, so Kwame actually asked a question here. He says, how do you feel when people, when you hear people say you are a terrible rapper? I'm fine with it. <laughs> you know what it does for me? Yeah. Sometimes it makes me, it motivates me <laughs> to do better. Because I'm not one of those people that, that started trying to be a musician or an MC. I've never said I'm the greatest. Right. Nah, I'm just here to enjoy myself and make music that the people can enjoy right. as well. So for me, you can only get better. You know, it makes me grow. I'm young. I've been doing this for like seven, about seven years. Yeah. It'll be seven years in September. Yeah. And for me, you still think there's a lot of ground to cover. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of ground to cover, yeah. and you can only get better. Yeah. yeah. And and you should let things like that motivate you. You know, you're right about that. If I'm on, if I, if what when I so so then what would Michael Jackson say? <laughs> well, what would you? Everybody gets criticized. Yeah. You know, from even our president. Even in the president of the most powerful country in the world. Gets Even the Pope gets criticized yes. for crying out loud. Exactly. So, so who are you to say, you don't yeah. talk about me? Nah, yeah. it's fine, you know? Yeah. If there was one ce celebrity you wish was your sibling, who which celebrity would that be? My sibling? <laughs> uh -huh. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know, you know. <laughs> Joey B was my next door neighbor for about 12 years, so he's like my brother. He yeah. was like a brother to me, you yeah. know, so maybe him. But... I haven't really thought about which celebrity I wish was my sibling. And if you had the chance to perform with any big name out there, which one would you choose? Um, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say perform. No, it's, I mean I probably would say in the, from the Western world. I probably won't even go to okay. Africa. Okay, for me to interact and to learn from mm -hmm. musically and mm -hmm. business wise. Right. It would probably be, be between Diddy and Jay-Z. I knew you'd go there. Yeah. I knew you'd go there. I knew you'd go there. Yeah. Okay, so complete the sentence for me. If I wasn't a rapper, I probably would be... An entertainment industry entrepreneur. <laughs> Which you are already. Easy. So anyway, you have a lot of upcoming you know, hip-hop cats and musicians that you know, some of them you have under your belt. Some people you're trying to train and you mm -hmm. know, teach them out there. What, 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 what would you say to them? Um, from the point of um, an executive music entrepreneur? I've been saying this for so long. For me, there are three things that are key to being successful. It's prayer, hard work, dedication. You could be the most talented rapper or singer, mm -hmm. but if you're not dedicated to what you do, I don't think it'll work. Mm -hmm. you, you, sh you should wake up and, and always want to do better than what you did the day before. True. 
and 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 make the music make better music and market your music more mm -hmm. always want more and more people to hear what you've done or what you have to say in your music me i don't play with god that's another thing that's that's my best friend everything i do is prayer involved regardless of what you believe in prayer is for everyone whether you're christian or muslim talk to the person you believe in and be dedicated to what you do if this is what you want to do go out there and fight for yourself and make it happen I think you're just a living example of what you're preaching yeah. because then you're dedicated to what you do yeah. and that's how come you hundred percent. Ah, it's the way to go. I guess maybe for the young people who are listening, dedication is a big thing and also, you know, just also submitting yourself to God and letting him rule is also the Humility. Thing. Humility yeah. is also Key. really important. I've seen yeah. people come up and switch. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't last for too long. No, yeah. Simply Humility always. Yeah, they couldn't hum humble themselves to learn. Good one. <laughs>